Hi, Rich Reese here for Rich Reese Bible Study. We often hear people talk about what the Lord has done for them. We don't often hear them talk about what they have done for the Lord. It seems that when it comes to the relationship many people have with God, they have the roles of master and servant backwards. Let's go for a ride and talk about this. We hear it all the time. Read it on social media. I'm so blessed. And we often see folks turning to the Lord for relief. We pray for healing. We pray for financial security. We pray out of fear. We pray out of desperation. And when our prayers are answered, we pray out of gratitude. But mainly, we pray about us, speaking either of what God has done for us or, more often, what we wish He would do for us. How often do we pray to be shown how to serve Him? Do we understand that we are here to serve God and that He is not here to serve us? In our relationship with the Lord, do we understand our role? Do we understand that He is the Master and we are the servant? Do our prayer lives reflect this understanding? Do we live our lives accordingly? This desire to be served by God is common among Christians. People are all the time telling us how they are praying for some sort of divine resolution for some sort of earthly frustration. They drum up support by asking others to pray with them or for them. It's not enough that they are spiritually weak and cannot trust God to care for them. It's not enough that they are constantly beseeching God to deliver them from worldly concerns. They want to draw others into their spiritual wasteland. When was the last time you saw someone trying to invoke a prayer chain among their friends that they be shown the way to selflessly serve the Lord? Have you ever seen that? And it's not just individuals. Churches are guilty of this as well. They do this with prayer circles and a call for concerns to be brought before the Lord in prayer during the service. Many tout faith healing. Most provide services for everything from retirement planning to parenting to marriage counseling. Many have outreach programs and offer social services. These are good things, yes, but I've never attended a church with workshops on how to be a servant of the Lord. I'm sure they're out there, but I've never seen one. And if such a workshop exists, and if the outcome of attending that workshop is that I decide how to serve God, the workshop has failed. It's still all about me. I retain control. I am showing God my holiness. I am not allowing God to show me my mission. I make my choice of how to serve and then create my plan to pursue my choice. I, me, my. Where does God come in? Who's defining my purpose, me or the Lord? As a presenter said at a conference I attended earlier this year, your purpose is not something you create. Your purpose is something you discover. Don't get me wrong, we all have worldly challenges. It's natural that we give attention to these challenges, and it's appropriate for us to bring our concerns before the Lord. But this should not form the substance of our prayer lives. These are not our challenges to manage if we have true faith in God. This is neatly summed up in John 16:33, where Jesus said, In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I used to have tons of challenges, now I have just one. My challenge is to serve the Lord better each day. The rest of my challenges I gave to Him. When it comes to challenges and scripture related to them, we can all cite a few verses regarding healing or peace or prosperity. Who hasn't recited Jeremiah 29:11? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We can all think of ways ask God what we want from Him. How many of us can cite verses describing what God asks of us? Let's look at a few. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding you today for your good. Deuteronomy 10, 12-13 from the ESV. And before you point out that this passage is addressed to the Israelites, you should know that the verse from Jeremiah is also addressed to them, or what remained of them at the time. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river, for the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 14 and 15 from the ESV. Well, what do you know? 
a verse about service to the Lord that most of us have heard. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sadly, few of us put this into practice, and certainly not to the extent that Joshua did. Only fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart, for consider what great things He has done for you. 1 Samuel 12, 24, ESV What does this verse say we are to do with all our heart? Beseech God? Trust Him to deliver us from our financial predicament? Pray that He intervene in our nation's politics? No, we are to serve Him faithfully with all our heart. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Psalms 2.11 ESV Does this describe the nature and emotional intensity I feel in my relationship with God? It should. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Matthew 4.10 ESV Jesus cites scripture to rebuke Satan in this passage where Satan tempts him three times. Jesus' final retort was sharp enough that then the devil left him. When I'm being tempted, do I respond with scripture as Jesus did? And do I cite scripture that identifies my role as servant to God and to him only? Let's go back to that I'm so blessed statement for a minute. Most folks who say this, if challenged by being asked, by whom are you blessed, would be unable to respond. It's trendy to make the claim of being blessed without really thinking about the mechanics of being blessed. Christians, at least, understand that God is the source of their blessings. The Bible is full of God's blessing on nations, tribes, and individuals. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Genesis 9.1 ESV And in this next verse, God blesses Abram and extends his blessings to Abram to those who come in contact with him. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12, 2 and 3, NIV. And one more, this one from Psalms. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Psalms 118, 26, King James Version. So we freely admit to being blessed by God, but do we also bless God? We are called to do so in several places in Scripture. Let's look at a few. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given to you. Deuteronomy 8.10 ESV And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped the Lord and the King. 1 Chronicles 29.20, King James. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalms 34.1, King James. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. Psalm 72, 18 through 19, King James. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Psalms 103, 1, ESV. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Psalms 115, 18, King James. This is where the version of the Bible you're using makes a difference. Some newer versions, such as the NIV, translate the original Hebrew not as blessed, but as praised. Look at Psalms 96.2. In the King James it reads, Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, shew forth his salvation from day to day. In the NIV it reads, Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. But then Psalms 145.10 has a different word translated as praise, and the one translated as bless is the one used in that way in other verses. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Psalms 145.10, King James. Certainly we bless the Lord by praising him and keeping his name holy, but that's not what we expect from God when we ask him to bless us. What we want is for God to intervene in our lives, to do something that improves our quality of life, something that gives us joy. God has no need for us to intervene in his life, but we can still bless God by doing things that give him joy. Like what? Look at these verses. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, 
and to heave is better than the fat of rams. 1 Samuel 15, 22, NIV. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Psalms 147, 10 through 11, NIV. We do well to remember the first part of Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let's remember who is the servant and who is the master. And let's remember that Jesus said we can have only one master. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. Matthew 6, 24, ESV. And when we get to heaven and are in the presence of God, how do we want that conversation to go? Do we want to dominate the discussion by thanking Him for finding a way for us to afford that vacation for our 20th anniversary, or healing our nephew's broken arm last year, or getting our old car to start so we could make it to the job interview that got us our first job out of college? Or do we want God to praise us for all the times we heard the still, small voice and responded with obedience? Do we want to hear the words of Jesus from Matthew 25, 23 as He tells us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. So it was a good ride. Thanks for joining me. As I edit this, I'll have other thoughts and some verses and some other stuff that I'll add to our Patreon page. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Put your notes in the comments below. Thank you for joining me on my walk of faith. Love the Lord. Love one another. I'll talk to you soon.